All right, week six, college football season. It is here. A lot of top 25 teams with questions. Uh, we're going to go over a few of them here. Some real interesting games as we kick off another edition of Bet On It, college football wise, with none other than Kelly Stewart and Marco D'Angelo. And let's dive in with a big game with one of those top 25 teams with some questions. Uh, Marco is number nine, Missouri. Going to be taking on Texas A&M in this one here. How confident are you with this number nine Missouri squad? Well, Missouri uh, is dropping a little bit because they're just getting by in some of their games, uh, getting a six-point win, I believe, and a four-point, six and a three-point win over Boston College and Vanderbilt. But They've had two weeks to prepare for this game. So I think you're going to see a better Missouri outfit here. And honestly, they should be winning by more margins. This is a team that's very balanced offensively. You know I love these teams. I refer to them as 200 club members that both run and pass for 200 yards. So with that extra week of prep, I think what you're going to find is they're going to go back to the drawing board. They're going to fine-tune what's been working and fix what hasn't and maybe have a couple new wrinkles for Texas A&M, who, after losing to Notre Dame the first uh, game of the season, came back and won four in a row. Now, however, if you look at those four wins, well, you had Florida in there. That doesn't impress anybody anymore, beating Florida. And then uh, the rest of the teams you can't even really write home about. And then they were life and death with Arkansas last week. So I think Missouri is going to be able to come in here and dominate this game. Uh, Another little stat, added bonus, as I said, with the week off, and when you couple that to this is Texas A&M's sixth straight game, no bye week since the start of the season, that's an advantage for Missouri as well. I think uh, in the NFL uh, segment, we always have Teddy talking about buying uh, and selling high and low. You know what? I think the market is down on Missouri right now, and I think that's an overreaction, and I think it might be just a little bit too high on Texas A&M. Give me Missouri 27-20 in this one. Ooh, all right, going Mizzou to get it done there against A&M and Mike Elko. Uh, Cal, interesting one here that uh, you chose as well, number 10, Michigan, traveling way, way west to take on Washington. Uh, a uh, a rematch of sorts of the national championship game, only pretty much nobody looks the same or has the same names. So how uh, do we approach Michigan going out to Washington in this one? Yeah, very, very good point. So if anybody tries to tell you this is a revenge spot for the Huskies, uh, they don't have the same quarterback. They don't have the same head coach. And oh, by the way, neither does Michigan. Here's what I will say. Michigan does have a bye week on deck. They looked all right in that second half last week. I'll give them that much. And uh, ultimately, that caused the game to go, well, over the total. And that's where we're going in this one. Five straight unders for Washington University. Unfortunately, as much as I'd love for this team to, well, do what I would like them to do as a small home favorite, I'm not sure they're capable. Eastern Michigan covered. Washington State not only won and covered one outright, but they also covered, obviously. And then what Rutgers won and covered last week. So this is a interesting spot. Again, I'd love to give Washington the nod. They did open up as a home dog on the wager talk odd screen. And somebody agreed that they should be a favorite here, but I like the over. This one screams 24, 21 final, something wonky is going to happen. And, uh, those are those Washington Huskies are not going to have six straight unders. All right, not buying the six straight under there for uh, for this game here. Kind of with you there. I think that's not a bad way to look. All right, we do have one other top twenty five team that's in action, and it's going to feature the U, the University of Miami, traveling out west to take on Cal, who had a bye week here and had an opportunity to get themselves ready for this game. And uh, the U, boy, this is their first true 
road game. And boy, do they have to travel and travel. They will to Cal to take on uh, Coach Wilcox here and this Cal Bears team. Listen, it was an interesting game, Miami, against Vatek, was it not? Um, some people say they got uh, they got the break. Uh, other people think Virginia Tech got absolutely screwed. I think the answer lies somewhere in between. The bottom line is uh, they ended up winning this game, so they take this undefeated record and travel 2,400 miles to go to Berkeley. Now, Cal, 3-1 and one on this season here. Uh, they got torched last year on defense. Uh, it was a very off season for Wilcox and Cal. This year, not so much. They've shored a lot of things up defensively. They're really good against the run, while Miami has topped 500 yards or more in all five games. But this is by far, I think, their toughest test. You got to go on the road. You got to go cross country. And you got to take a team now that's had not one but two weeks to prepare for you here. And Cal has always been a team that you want to back when it comes to uh, double-digit dogs, 30 and 16 as an underdog, including 12 and 5 as a home dog is what head coach Wilcox is in this spot. Listen, I think Miami will win this game. It'll be hopefully not the crystal ball uh, game that we think eventually is coming this year. But I also don't think this game stays remotely close to the under. I do think this is an over game at 55. Ten and a half is the current line now. We'll talk more about this game, I'm sure, a little bit later. But I think the over is the way to look in this one. That, of course, Saturday night at 10 30 Eastern time. All right. I smell it. I know you smell it. That is gold, people. Week six of the college football season is upon us. Kind of hard to believe that we are, but here we are, week six, which means got to be getting good here in the marketplace. What are you seeing this week? Yeah, a lot of moves. And real quickly, Joe, I just want to share that this information is for you to help confirm your liens. Uh, I'm moving a lot of stuff. We're doing a lot of middles. We're doing a lot of scalps on money lines. And a lot of the information comes from other traders as well. So I don't want betters to automatically just blindly piggyback sharp information because as the days progress and the market moves, a lot of changes happen. So I don't want to see, I want to make sure that the information is used as an asset. Um, let's dive right in. Friday, Jacksonville State at Kennesaw. You got a one and three team versus 0 oh and four. Last game they played in 2022 went to overtime. So Jacksonville State laying two touchdowns plus and they laid it. Got to mean something. UNLV, no surprise there. They're the hot team. Everyone out here is obviously talking about them in Vegas. Minus four and a half, minus five. Books got to protect themselves. This is the first road game um, for Syracuse. What's UNLV's 4-0, and oh, straight up 4-0 and oh against the spread. Will the market correct itself? Wise guys don't think so. But keep an eye out if the, the resistance comes at minus six because I've been seeing more of that than anything else in college football. The ability to move the line three plus points and then come back on the other side. Sometimes it's manipulation to get three, four, five X on the other side at a better number. But many times it's nothing more than a simple middle. Why not put that up? You got to hit one out of 20 to, to break even. So they're middling every chance they get, especially around those key numbers. Now move into Saturday's action, 4-0 Pittsburgh, straight up and against the spread. They laid one and a half. They laid two and a half against that UNC team that has zero spread covers to date. But over the last uh, 10 in the series, it's been UNC that's gotten the better of Pittsburgh. I think they're eight and two, but the ride and high on this Pittsburgh team. But keep in mind, it's near that key number. Minus one and a half, minus two and a half. Watch the market to see if there's take back at plus three or if it goes through three. Those are telling signs. Move down to 317, East Carolina, minus seven and a half against Charlotte. Now, ECU's minus six at home in 2023 and they lost that game straight up 10-7 so here they are laying even more to charlotte factor that in western michigan the one and three western michigan team oh and three on the road lane seven and a half that's what they laid more than a touchdown but there was resistance ball state plus 10 got bought up as well moved down to 343 bc minus three and a half against virginia bc's three and oh at home one and one on the road four one versus three and one 
it's around that key number. So it's interesting to see if this line moves off the key number or if they just attract attach VIG to it. Move down to Navy, 347. Another undefeated team that they're getting out ahead of the market. Remember, the limits are lower this early in the week. You get on those public teams, drive that line up. You could come back and take Air Force at maybe double digits, maybe even higher than that. Not saying that's what's going to happen, but always keep your eye out for that. Um, so far, there's been no resistance. We've already seen 10, and they're leaving that alone, even though Air Force has covered four straight and are five and one in the last six in this series. But uh, in, Navy money is coming in from the Sharps. Indiana, same thing. Another undefeated team, 5-0 and oh straight up, 4-1 and one against the spread. No surprise. Lay the 11 and a half. Lay the 12, 12 and a half. What, no surprise, what did we see? Resistance at 14. That's when the Northwestern money came in. There's a lot of that going on in college football. Shows you it's all about making money from this market, not predicting outcomes. Move down to Virginia Tech, 363. Minus six and a half, minus seven, through that key number of minus eight, through Stanford. It's sitting at nine right now. Gonna watch to see. Does it get pushed up to 10? Because that's what the piggybackers should do. Uh, even though they're a two and three team, uh, straight up and against the spread. I, I think they should piggyback that, that uh, short money. If we see the 10 and you don't see any take back, another telling sign there, again, from a two and three straight up team. West Virginia, 375, plus four and a half and plus four against Oklahoma State. Dude, Oklahoma State's won eight of the last nine in this series, but it doesn't matter. They won in West Virginia last year, but it doesn't matter. They like West Virginia plus the points. See what happens at that key number. Couple totals real quickly, over 50 and 51, BC and Virginia, 51 points scored last year. So it's right around that same number. 361 over 48 and a half. Nevada, San Jose State, six of the last 10 in the series have gone under. These have been under teams, at least two out of five, three out of five for uh, Nevada and 50 54 San Jose. Move on to 363 under 54, under 53. Va Tech and Stanford. You got opposite trajectories. Four and one over to Va Tech, one and three to the under for Stanford, but they like that game under for sure. Hit it two times. And finally, Baylor, Iowa State, 373 under 46 and a half. And the uh, last four in this series have gone over and the average has been about 46. That's what the number is. So still keeping it at that 46, even though four straight overs, uh, telling sign there. So for me, that wraps it up so far uh, as of Wednesday. And I'll be on last call Saturday with Kelly where we could tighten it up, maybe narrow down those strongest steam positions that are legit. Real quick, uh, VR, before we get you out of here, and it's all important, again, that last yes, call sir. on Saturday is the best way uh, to learn what's happening late in the market because we keep seeing it week in and week out where a lot more of the money is rolling in late as opposed to earlier during the week. Some of these really big, have you noticed any, uh, some of the groups backing off some of these big 20 plus point spreads like UCLA keeps getting three, four touchdowns every week and teams just aren't seeming to pull away like they have in the past. Have you noticed there seems to be a little bit less with the big, big favorites, uh, maybe not getting esteemed as they have in the past? Yeah, you're, you're even seeing that it not getting moving too much early right. on those numbers where in historically, even if you didn't love the position, you knew that you'd have you know, liquidity to get out of it later at a better yep. number because the public hasn't even bet yet. They're going to wait till later in the week yep. and they're probably going to be betting that favorite as well. And you're absolutely right. That just hasn't happened. So you're not seeing many double digit steam moves. And historically you did in college football where in the NFL, it's almost the opposite. They don't like laying double digits. They're going to grab it or nothing at all. But in college football, they have no problem laying those double digits. And yet, I don't think I, I shared one single side that mm. was higher than like a, a seven or eight, and they pushed it up the double digits, not laying the double digits. So yeah, either, you know, maybe a, a little more parity mm. or a little more efficient market that we're looking at, but a great observation because you are not getting that free middle on no. those top teams like you did back <laughs> in the day. You could just bet the top five, the top five ranked teams, and you're going to get at least three or four middles out of that yep. every yeah. week if you bet them on Sunday or Monday as soon as the lines go up.
Yeah, it's, a, it's another one of those things as we head into week six. We've noticed the game's changing a little bit, VR, here Indeed. certainly in college football, but it's not changing with you, my man. We appreciate it as always. Again, we'll see you last call on Saturday, 12 noon Eastern time. Get all of that last minute gold here on Wager Talk TV. All right, it is time to talk some dogs here, specifically the double digit kind of dog. And Cal, we talked about this game just a little bit earlier here, and I know you've got some thoughts when it comes to the U taking on Cal this weekend. So tell me what's going on with this game. Yeah, I'm still floored we didn't cash Western Kentucky money line. I, I mm. think that was probably the worst beat I've had all season long. Spread was never in doubt. Castellanos information, never in doubt. But my goodness, I can't believe we didn't cash that plus 300. But I digress because we're going to cash this one. Uh, what is this, ACC after dark? Like, what a <laughs> world we're living in. It's the strangest thing. But it's going to be fun. And I am very excited for this one. I was going through the gold sheet hoping I could find a tidbit of information. But instead, I just found something very hilarious. And uh, the last time these two played, Mario Cristobal was a lineman for the Miami Hurricanes. In case anybody wanted to know, fun fact, you guys can ask your buddies that at the bar. Uh, but I am going to take the Cal Bears here and kind of elaborate on not only what Joe Ranieri said, but something that I think is really being overlooked in this one. Do we forget who Cam Ward played for last year? Oh, yeah, Washington State. So this Cal's defense not only beat him last year, but has seen him before. All of the nice things that Justin Wilcox has done for us as underdogs keep on happening on Saturday night, 1030 Eastern. It's going to be a long trip for those Canes who got very lucky to win last Friday night. Yep, we're just going to keep betting against them once again. Mario Cristobal, oh boy, we're going to see if <laughs> he doesn't get beat there in Berkeley. I like Cal plus the 10 and a half. I like Cal on the money line. Woo! Calling Cal plus 10 and a half and the money line there on. I love that. ACC after dark is fantastic there. Marco, you're going to need a sandwich if you're going to stay up that late, right? And have uh, <laughs> and watch that disgustingness. But uh, something tells me uh, you've got a sandwich for us this week, but you got a few other uh, sandwiches that you're storing away too. Tell us about it. Yeah, Joe, uh, we started doing this a couple weeks ago, and we're going to continue to do it throughout the college football season with the sandwich spots. You know, every week I go through the entire schedule, and there's a lot of different sandwich situations every week, but I only give you one here on the show. So what I'm going to do is I come back, and it'll be posted on Fridays at Wager Talk. You can see some other sandwich situations, and I'll explain them to you on that video. So subscribe hit the subscribe button and when you do subscribe and watch the videos do me a favor hit the like button and if there's anything you want to see or have questions go ahead and ask them in there leave me a comment we will answer them for you now for this week's sandwich we're gonna head hey we're going out west too we're gonna take a look at virginia tech they're gonna play stanford they're traveling all the way across country this week now I'll be honest with you, when I first looked at this game, knee-jerk reaction was going to be, oh, man, we are going to be going against Virginia Tech. Why? Well, you just mentioned it. They played Miami last week, and they took them to the limit as a 17-and-a-half-point underdog. And honestly, they should have won the game. Normally, I like to fade those big dogs whenever they had a near upset. Generally, um, oftentimes they come up flat, but I'm not going to do that here because they're going to play Stanford. This is new, having these uh, Pac-12 teams uh, that migrated over to the ACC. And because that was the first ACC game for Virginia Tech, all is not lost yet. They've only got one loss in conference. If they take care of business, get their games when they can still get themselves in the ACC championship game, which is all that matters. Now, flip side, look at Stanford, and we've got a unique situation here. Stanford 
has gone on back-to-back weeks across country. We wanted to see how this was going to work out for these Pac-12 schools coming all the way east and playing these games. Two weeks ago, they traveled to play on a Friday night against Syracuse. Then uh, last week, they went back across country once again to play uh, at Clemson. They got their doors blown off at Clemson. Now they're returning back home. Two big weeks in a row on the road. You play the premier team of the ACC for the last, you know, what, five, ten years. Uh, Clemson has been dominant in the ACC. You go back home to play Virginia Tech. Bounce back spot, but oh, wait. Who do you play next week? You're back out on the road again. That'll be three road games in four weeks, and then you're not just going anywhere. You're going to play Notre Dame. So, Off of Clemson, Notre Dame on deck. No, I can't do it. And let's look at the nuts and bolts of this game. We know what Virginia Tech's going to do. They're going to try to run the football down your throat. This is a team that averages just under 200 yards per game. They average 38 rushes per game, and they are a physical football team. Most of those Pac-12 schools, I always referred to that as a finesse conference. They don't like to play smash mouth football. I think Virginia Tech's going to be able to wear them down, especially given the schedule that uh, Stanford has had to do the last couple weeks going back and forth to the East Coast. I like Virginia Tech. Never fun laying points with Virginia Tech. But as I always say, if you got a running team and you're trying to sit on a lead, and you're doing what you do best, you can extend that lead in the fourth quarter. Let's go ahead and lay it with Virginia Tech as the sandwich game of the week. And as I said, don't forget, tune in Friday over at Wager Talk TV. Check out our YouTube channel. I'll have some more sandwich spots for you. All right, Marco, good stuff. Plenty of sandwiches in Marco's deli. It is wide open each and every week for sure. But... We got an opportunity, I think, to fade Joe Public uh, this weekend, week six of the college football season, and I fully plan on doing so as the public is rushing to the window to back USC, the Trojans. Of course they are taking on Minnesota, who uh, did a pretty good job of coming back in the second half and making that way closer against Michigan than Michigan backers actually wanted listen that was a lot of heart against michigan on saturday michigan did not throw the ball michigan uh did their very best to run the ball a couple of uh key turnovers there some fumbles by minnesota really put them behind the eight ball in that game however i don't see that being a problem in this game mostly because i see minnesota being able to run the ball much better against usc than they had the last couple of weeks. Let, let's when you consider it, right? They ran against Iowa and Michigan. Those were the two teams that Minnesota had to try to run the ball against. Those are two of the best run defenses in the country. Now they have a much more favorable matchup against a USC team here that was terrible against the run. Just look at what Michigan de- uh, did. They knew they couldn't throw the ball, and Michigan ran for 290 yards and over 6.2 yards a carry. Darius Taylor is going to run the ball down the throat of USC, which also is going to allow P.J. Fleck to dominate time of possession. Miller Moss, and listen, USC can't run the ball. Uh, And Minnesota has one of the best secondaries in the country right now. They're rated top five in just about every passing category. And I don't see Miller Moss. If you got to drop him back 40, 50 times in the game, That's not going to work. They have not run the ball well. I don't see them running the ball well against Minnesota at home. And here's the one kicker. Finally, USC and Lincoln Riley. Do you guys want to know what Lincoln Riley is as, uh, as a big favorite heading on the road in this kind of spot? The answer is atrocious. Covers about 31% of the games. Not a great spot for Lincoln Riley. Not a good spot for USC. I do like the matchup for Minnesota. I will take the eight and a half points as the public runs to back USC. We'll be running to back Minnesota in this one. All right, week six here at a college football season. Time for a little TNA with the pen. 
Mr. Ralph Michaels in the house, coming off a uh, now a second week in a row with a winning play here on the TNA segment on Ben Audit. Ralph, you are crushing it in college football on a 10 and 1 run. Uh, nobody's seeing the board better than you, but going to be interesting with this uh, TNA play of yours this week because uh, eh, some people might think we got a mm-hmm. letdown spot here. What do you think? Well, listen, Joe, how can you not? You're Alabama. You just beat Georgia. You have control of the SEC. You're off a top 10 win. You're you're playing a team that you've beaten 99 straight times. Maybe not quite the right number. And you have South Carolina on deck. So what am I going to do? I am going to back the Alabama Crimson Tide. I went to the database, guys. If a team is off a win and both teams were AP top 10 teams, like Bama and Georgia last week, this shocked the heck out of me, Joe. 42, 21, and 3 against the spread. That is 67% since 2016. So you know what? If you ever hear this team is off a win against the top 10 foe, they have to be in a letdown, wrong. If that team is now in a way favorite of seven or more, like Bama is this week, they've gone 21 and five against the spread, 81%. And how about this? If a team is 500 or lower, they're a home dog of 19 and a half or more, they're off a bye and off a road game. Circle Vanderbilt, this system applies to Vanderbilt, Since 1989, five wins, 31 losses. Folks, that is 84%. Vandy's a slow-paced team, number 119 in tempo. They're not going to be able to keep keep up with Bama. Explosive plays. On offense, Vanderbilt is number 121 with only 12 explosive plays of 20 yards or higher. Bama's D has only allowed 11 this year. That is number 14 in the country. And how about this? You want to talk about an explosive team? I was boggled by this stat. In the 17 starts for Jalen Milrow for Bama, he has had 33 passing touchdowns. Those passing touchdowns have averaged 35.3 yards per touchdown. That is an incredible stat with many long touchdowns. I am actually going to go first half in this game as my official bet. I like Bama minus the 23, but getting the minus 12 and a half or minus 13 is very, very attractive in this situation. Bama gets out early against the Commodores and takes them to the woodshed. Official first half best bet. Bama minus 12 and a half. Oh, speaking my language, Ralph Michaels, first half on Bama is the TNA play. Looking to make it a three and O oh here on this segment. Ralph, as always, a absolute pleasure, my man. We'll see you again on the uh on the NFL edition of Bet on It when you drop a little more TNA knowledge. But first, we gotta get to some best bets. All right, I don't want to say anything, but I'm I'm feeling it here. I'm feeling a 3 and 0 sweep on the best bets on the show this week here. And we're going to start with you, uh Kel, and, and this was a game I had circled early this week too, and I'm so glad that you like this team. So, break it down. Where are you going for the best bet this week? Joe, this is a game I had circled like in July. <laughs> like this is like the spot <laughs> to back the Gamecocks, and Kentucky ruined it for us. We would have been double-digit home underdogs had Ole Miss not lost outright. I'm so glad I gave Ariel Epstein the prop queen, Kentucky, and then didn't put a single American dollar on it myself. I digress. Look, here is an Ole Miss team. It's getting a lot of love. And while I do love Lane Kiffin, four of the Rebels wins, six and 12. That is against those teams. That is combined. Six and 12 with only two wins over FBS teams. And then you've got the South Carolina team. They are off a bye. And guess who's back? Oh, yes, Lenoris Sellers. And, of course, one of the better running backs in the SEC in Sanders. And I think he's going to be one of the better running backs that Ole Miss faces all year long. So we have a dual threat there on the offensive side of things. On the defensive side of things, we've got a really solid O-line, 14 sacks including five when they played that same Kentucky team. 
Ole Miss. Well, guess what? They uh, they send their guy that dresses very oddly, I might say, running for his life quite often. Gamecocks 15 and nine against the spread at home. Give me the plus nine and give me some of that plus three dollars on the money line. Woo, taking it down. South Carolina loved the way to go. Yes, I too. I was uh, telling everyone about uh, Kentucky last week. And what I do, not a damn thing. Just watched everyone <laughs> ah. else cash and didn't place one dollar on it. Aggravating as all hell. Now, Marco, uh, for those that did not watch the uh, NFL edition of Bet on It, I would highly encourage you to go check it out. There is one play from Marco there in which uh, literally Teddy, myself, and Kelly uh, gagged uh, for about five minutes uh, when he laid that out. So I'm hoping your best bet is a little smoother going down than what you gave us on the NFL edition here, Marco. Where are you looking on this card, big card here, for a best bet this week? Joe, you're like a wife. You're never satisfied. We gave you <laughs> winners last week, and you're and you're still bitching about it because they didn't taste good. They didn't taste correct. good. I'm sorry. Yes. Disgusting. Okay. All right. Yeah, well, before I get to the best bet, I want to remind everybody we got a special going over at Wager Talk. Uh, since the host didn't promote it, I will. <laughs> we got seven days for $77. It's site wide, not just me, but you know, if you're going to ask me who you should buy, tell you this guy you can pick up all of my plays, seven days, $77, and that includes 5%. Plays. Now, remember, these 5% plays sell for $35 by themselves. You'll get a whole week for $77. We've had three of those 5% plays so far this season. We've hit all three of them, and we're on an 11-2 and two run with those 5% plays going back to last February. All right, enough about that promotion. And uh, since Joe didn't do it, you know, I got to do his job too. But now we'll do my job and try to give you a, another best bet winner. And we gave you Boise State last week, and we got a little bit of the same theme here this week. We talked about Boise State. Why were they laying over a touchdown to an undefeated Washington State team last week? Well, here we go again. We've got Georgia Tech laying over a touchdown. Line with eight and a half. We're starting to see nines pop up around town on this one as well. Uh, it's on the move, and I would tell you to get down now. Duke is undefeated, but when your claim to fame is beating Northwestern in week two in North Carolina last week, a game in which you were down 20 to nothing to North Carolina, and you had to rally to win. And, oh, by the way, that's the same North Carolina team that – let James Madison score 70 on them the week before. No, I'm not buying this Duke team. Now, with Georgia Tech here, two weeks ago, I went against them. I took Louisville. I cashed a ticket, but I'll be honest with you. I was lucky to do so. That game swung on one play. And that play, it was a 12-point win, but you had a situation in that game where – Georgia Tech was lining up for a 50-yard field goal. The field goal was blocked and returned 60 yards for a touchdown. That's a 10-point swing in that game. That was the difference of that game. Then what we saw last week from Louisville, they went to Notre Dame and played Notre Dame right to the gun. So Louisville's a good team. Georgia Tech hung tough with Louisville, and the score was much closer than it was. I expect Georgia Tech to be able to run roughshod over this Duke team. And if you haven't watched Georgia Tech play recently, it's not the old Georgia Tech where they run, run, run. They throw the football. And then it also sets up the pass. But they're more of a passing team now in this Duke team. Not impressed at all. Georgia Tech also had last week off. So they've had two weeks to prepare for this one. I like them to roll in this one. We're going to go ahead and take them this will be the best passing attack that duke has faced this year they're going to get exposed that's why it's over a touchdown lay it i got georgia tech the rambling wreck 41 to 23.
So you're saying that was seven days for just $77, Marco? I want to thank you for jumping the gun and doing my job since that was my tagline <laughs> once you were finished. But that's all right. Thanks for reiterating. Sure. Seven days, 77 yeah, sure, bucks. Sure. Yeah, just Sure it was. Yeah, Please. Yeah. I'm just so yeah. glad I don't I have to host the college before. segment anymore. I'm over it's here ridiculous. in the wings. Working Says on it my right in the away. script. Says it right here in the script. All right, fine, Marco. Now that you got that out of the way, it's time for a uh, a best bet here. And uh, I don't get it. Listen, this opened up as a pick 'em, uh, but I uh, and judging from what just happened uh, there at the bounce house last week with Colorado coming in and absolutely uh, bulldozing UCF, although UCF did outgain them. In that game, they did have a few other issues uh, going on. But Florida is coming off its bye at the Swamp. And somehow, I guess the market may think that, what, they are somehow have fixed the ability not to stop the run since they've given up, oh, I don't know, let's see, 310 yards versus Texas A&M and 240 against a weak-ass Mississippi State uh, State team uh, two weeks ago. And somehow a bye week, they figured out how to stop uh, the run all of a sudden. I'm not buying it. I think UCF, who, by the way, won uh, this meeting, I believe, in 2021, uh, 29 to 17. I have no problem uh, backing Gus Miles on in this spot. And apparently, even though the public seems to be loving Florida in this, the line is not moving towards Florida. It's moving towards UCF. Two and a half is what we have here. And I'm okay with it. K.J. Jefferson uh, won in the swamp last year at Arkansas. Gus Malzahn will get this uh, ship right. There is just far too many weapons, especially running the ball on the ground for UCF. This is a Gator team that cannot stop the run, and they also will not have time of possession. Gus Malzahn will come into uh, the swamp, and it'll be the game in which... Billy Napier gets fired. Mark my words. Mark this tape. UCF is going to run all over Florida. And this time next week, Billy Napier, in all likelihood, will be out of a job. And I know a lot of Gator fans that think that's probably should happen anyway. Who's going to be the new head coach of Florida? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, Well, let's see. If they didn't suck so bad, I would have said Lance Leopold because his wife hates Lawrence, Kansas. But I don't know if he's a candidate any longer. <laughs> That's a good point, too. I, actually, I don't hate that. There are a few names, uh, former Florida coaches slash players that have been uh, associated with this. But the bottom line is Napier, you got to go. You can't be this terrible Ouch. here. Got to go. And UCF will be that nail in his coffin. All right, there you got it. I don't know if you guys heard, seven days, $77 uh, is what you can get site-wide over at wagertalk.com. Make sure you visit Marco's page or VR or Ralph or Andy or Teddy or any of your favorite handicappers. Seven days, 77 bucks right now over at wagertalk.com. All right, that'll do it. Week six of the college football season. It is here. It's kind of hard to believe, but we kick off October. Let's do it on a winning note. On behalf of Kelly and Marco, we certainly appreciate the time, guys. Enjoy the games and enjoy more of the previews here. Just click on that video on your screen right now and watch all of the big game breakdowns of all the top 25 teams playing in action this week. Until then, let's bet on it. We'll see you next week.